Lamar Aismo video. Here we go. And this one will probably be You People number four. It's my ongoing series uh, where I talk to people who actually are still playing the, the politics game, uh, believing in the system that obviously uh, needs to be uh, so either severely reformed or to just be outright rejected. But you people who still play the game. Uh, it's just false left right you know politics and the whole liberal conservative p people who label themselves with those labels uh, it's time to grow up and wake up the, you know you're being lied to you're being played manipulated and uh, used to uh, further uh, the elites uh, hold on power and uh, wealth so this is it's, again it's time to wake up but what made me get to this uh, video, this is impromptu, but Trump has been lying to you people again. Uh, he, 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 t he told you he wanted out of NATO, which would be a good idea because if um, we're honest and we remember history, NATO was supposed to be uh, an alliance, a military alliance in response to the Soviet Union's Warsaw Pact. And with the collapse of the Soviet Union, NATO should have been disbanded because especially when the Soviet Union first collapsed, there was no power of you know even close enough to continue to maintain that sort of alliance uh, for the sake of uh, China at the time was still on the rise, but it wasn't anywhere near as powerful economically or militarily as today and technologically. Uh, China was uh, beginning to uh, to ascend, and and part of that is uh, for you people, uh, the Republicans making overtures uh, to them, the Nixon, you know they, and that's where they sent all your jobs to. But you think the same people who dealt your jobs to the Chinese are going to bring them back? It's not going to happen uh, because capitalism loves slave labor. Uh, don't take my word for that. Uh, read any mainstream. I mean, even even history books that try to put a positive spin on the development of the modern world and modern economy. If, if, if the book's worth anything, worth the paper it's printed on, you'll and, and, and if you're objective and you read it and you you'll notice a pattern of either slave labor being employed or cheap labor. And as long as that's the case, uh, capitalism has no loyalty to any nation ethno-linguistic group, people, religious group. The point of capitalism is uh, the people with the capital and most of the time capital is uh, uh, the uh, people who have their hands on the levers of large banks and other uh, big firms like that that have money to invest in other people. They don't actually have to uh, produce anything, get out there and be productive or put, put out a product that everyone loves. They could just make money off of making money and lending money but uh, I digress. Uh, Trump wants to start an Arab NATO, and uh, Arab NATO is, is is the most foolish idea I've ever heard of. And this is to counter Iran, by the way, a country that poses uh, no threat to the continental United States or um, any of its territories. Iran doesn't have; they don't have the missile capability to reach the continental United States, Guam, or. You know, it, you know, anywhere where people with United States Social Security numbers of passports, uh, are, you know, reside, uh, you know, as, as, as a home. So they're not a threat to us, but Iran is actually a threat to Israel. But the reason Iran is a threat to Israel is because Israel is a threat to Iran. In my prior video, we talked about the whistleblower and uh, hero Mordecai Venunu, who exposed the fact that the Israelis have over 200 nuclear missiles. And, um... That's part of the reason Hezbollah exists is because it's actually a deterrent uh, so that Israel doesn't do anything uh, st really stupid against Iran and actually physically attack Iran. Uh, you know, that, it's a deterrent. And the same thing applies to Israel. Israel has the nuclear weapons so they don't ever ha have to worry about losing their uh, Jewish state. Because, again, if the Arabs are ever able to successfully invade Israel, they could just nuke the entire region. So if we actually had honest and just politicians, they would uh, broker uh, a peace or a ceasefire because neither side can attack the other without severe consequences. But 
we don't have uh, either honest or uh, just politicians or really even sane politicians because, again, when you have a situation like that, a sane person, especially somebody who's impartial or care or cares more about their country, uh, you know, like uh, the U.S. government should care more about what's happening in the United States and U.S. territories, but uh, I tend to think that the uh, government doesn't give a damn and Part of that is because they're so uh, controlled by these banks and corporations. They really care more so about uh, what's happening around the world. They need to have uh, raw materials to loot from the global south in order to um, sell their their citizens and other people around the world overpriced goods. That they they steal the resources to make these goods and they use slave like Apple. Apple uses a uh, really cheap labor in China. And they sell their goods here in the United States at absorbent rates. I mean, it's, it's absurd, but it's the world that most of you people like to live in. You, you, you have no inkling or desire for any sort of justice. But back to this whole Arab-NATO fiasco, the Arabs don't need a NATO. They're so incompetent, they can't even uh, govern their own people without uh, severe oppression. Good case in point of that is uh, Egypt, uh, military dictatorship once again, after briefly experimenting with democracy and the people voting in uh, by a very slight, very, very slight majority, the Muslim Brotherhood, who is just as dictatorial as the military uh, junta or junta, but um, uh, with, with different reasons. The Muslim Brotherhood is a you know, fundamental Sunni fundament quote unquote excuse me quote unquote sunni um fundamentalist whereas the um, secular military dictatorship they're just in it for the money uh al, al sisi is just um he's interested in complying with his masters in washington and, and tel aviv making money and ensuring that he and his uh clique stay in power that's all they care about uh, same thing applies with the Al Saud crime family. The, Al, the, the Saudi Arabia is ruled by a multitude of princes who break every single law in that country. Uh, things that Saudis would get their head chopped off for, like selling drugs, they do it all the time and they get away with it. Uh, homosexual acts, they get away with that prostitution, drinking. Uh, so they're ruled, uh, the Saudi people are ruled by brutal uh, kleptocrats slash uh, dictators. And um, and the, the same could be said uh, about the rest of the region, except for Oman. The government there is a little more sane. Uh, the people uh, have similar racist attitudes towards non-Arabs. I saw actually uh, migrant workers in the Arabian Peninsula and, and all those countries uh, tend to be abused by the, the people that they work for, especially when they're from the Indian subcontinent or if they're from Africa, they get severely abused, or Philippines for that matter, Philippines, Indonesia, don't take my word for any of this. Uh, any search engine you want, put in um, UAE, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Oman, uh, abused uh, migrant workers. I mean, it, believe me, you'll get a lot of uh, results in that, in that uh, search. So the United States uh, wants to start a, a NATO-like organization with these brutal dictatorships. But wait a minute, I thought we we're supposed to promote democracy, freedom, and justice, uh, and anti-racism around the world. That's, that's our pretense for a lot of the actions that we do around the world is we're promoting democracy. But you know, to be fair, our government does a lot, um, a lot less of this whole um, rhetoric about support and freedom. Under the Bush administration, that was the, the go-to lingo, but... Uh, good thing Trump's in there. The uh, hypocrisy uh, is, is a bit less because now they're actually saying, yeah, we it's more real politique. We're supporting these brutes because uh, it, it helps our bottom line or it furthers our power in, in a given region. So, uh, yeah, we're going to support um, a NATO-like organization for racist, hypocritical, uh, dictatorial, warmongers, and human rights abusers so that that's on the record now you know that's been floated it's been suggested that we um, promote an arab nato and um meanwhile the country that we're promoting this arab nato against iran iran is, is not perfect by any st stretch of the imagination 
but they do allow freedom of religion for Christians. There's churches, there's synagogues. Uh, Saudi Arabia has neither of those um, religious uh, institutions. Uh, no, excuse me. They don't allow any of those religions to build institutions and buildings within their society. I think the um, current brutal monarch, uh, Mohammed bin Salman, is trying to make overtures and and um, you know claim he wants moderation, but nothing could be further from the truth. So yeah, we're gonna we want to start a, a NATO-like organization with uh, racist, uh, hypocritical, warmongering maniacs, but. That shouldn't surprise anyone who's been paying attention to history. Uh, and it, unfortunately, this country, the country was making a turn for the better at times, but maybe one day we'll get uh, people who govern our country here in the United States that actually either they'll stand up for these ideals that we claim to promote or they'll at least let the chips fall around the world as they may because if they were to do more of that, uh, the world would end up a, a better place in the long run. But... I doubt it. They'll continue to um, promote these uh, bad uh, regimes because they love to call any country that, that doesn't prostrate to Israel and um, allow us to become our vassal. They refer to those countries as regimes. So, um, but I'm approaching my time limit. But before I go, another impromptu issue I wanted to discuss. I was watching a document. I remember when I was a kid. Hurricane Andrew hit South Florida. Um, and this is just more proof that, um, you know, these insurance companies are uh, total uh, for-profit uh, ventures. They, they, and they actually cannot uh, fulfill their obligations, especially when a major disaster happens. Because when Andrew hit South Florida, four insurance companies totally folded and went out of business. And the ones that remained open, the government, guess what? Uh, for all you people who don't like taxes and you don't like government, big government, big daddy government, and big spending, you tend to um, agree with it when it's helping the rich or it's helping these uh, institutions that just most, for most of the time, they collect money without ever having to uh, produce anything for it. For some reason, we we here, in, the, in especially in the United States, I don't know about the, the rest of the West, but um, we here in the United States love to give free money to people who don't need it and to give them government bailouts and help. But when it's time to bail out the people, because uh, the documentary I saw was interesting too, because um, Dick Durbin was on there and he was talking about how states should fund their own disaster relief and how the, how the federal government just keeps spending and spending more and more on federal, on, on uh, you know, FEMA and uh, federal and declaring a given area a federal disaster area. Uh, he says the states need to be responsible, but if you're from a poor state, a state of a, of a, if the right disaster hits the right state, that state would not be able to cope with it. But again, it just goes to show you that certain politicians care more about um, helping the rich and the powerful than they ever will uh, care about the people to hell with the people. And that's how most people think. It's still sad, but most people have this silly uh, me uh, you know, mentality that, um, you know, to hell with the people let's spend all the tax revenue on making the rich richer and buying more weapons we don't need another thing before i go is um i want to laugh at you people about uh with uh, your favorite um netanyahu uh, uh puppet uh donald trump he actually wants to start a space force like how much is that going to cost i mean I, I you know i hope it's i hope this idea is dead in the water because the air force already handles uh the the whole space defense thing so let's hope that this this space force thing doesn't happen because how much is that going to cost our, our military spend is already over a trillion dollars when you include the nuclear weapons that they put under the department of energy instead of dod the dod is over 700 billion dollars so when you add that uh, nuclear weapons expense that puts it over a trillion how much do you think the space force is going to cost but you people uh, that are conservatives and the Republican and some of you liberals too because liberals love to spend on the military industrial complex too you're going to um, give it the green light and um, we're never going to have government uh, health care we'll keep paying private insurers to rob us because the government pays for that too anyway you have a copay, and then the government still pays for health care so why not just cut out the insurance company from making free money cut out the middleman just give the 
give what you would give the insurance company to the government and call it a day and have single payer. People don't think like that. It's unfortunate, but uh, that's it. Uh, see you in a future video, God willing. Thanks for watching.